Hey, I know it's been a while since our last video. What can I say? Tax season sometimes gets in the way. But never fear, my friends. You can always trust that I'll be back. Just like my good friend Arnold and the Terminator. So do you need to get an old or missing W-2 to file an old tax return? Need a copy of a previous tax return you filed? Looking for a transcript so you can complete the FAFSA for student loans or apply for a home loan? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get any of these documents and more directly from the IRS in under 15 minutes. Let's go. Welcome to Tax Chit Chat, the place where we talk all things tax all the time. So as I just mentioned, if you're looking to get your tax records from the IRS in the fastest way possible, then you're going to want to use the Get Transcript tool over at irs.gov. So let's head on over to the computer where I'll show you how to sign up for an IRS online account and then pick the transcript you'll need depending on what document you're looking for. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head on over to irs.gov and select the Get Your Tax Record option. This will take you to the Get Transcript tool. Now, I've put a link in the description of this video that will take you directly to the correct page if you don't want to spend time looking for it on the IRS page. Now, this page has the option for you to have your transcripts mailed to you, but you're going to select the Request Online option on the left. This is where you're going to sign up for your online IRS account. Since we don't have an account, we have to create an account, so we click the link to create an account. Then we go through a couple of other steps. And then on the screen, you can see that it will tell you what's needed to register. To begin, just enter in your name and email address. Now, you don't have an email address? Then before you start this process, just go to a service like Google, where you can sign up for a Gmail account, or you can head over to Outlook, and you can sign up for an Outlook account over there. The whole process should take you less than five minutes to set up an email account. Now, after you have the email account, you come back, then you go ahead and after you hit submit, the IRS will email you a code that you have to enter in on a screen that looks like this one. Once you enter in the security code, it will then ask you to enter in your personal information. Now, we can see on this screen, this information will include your name, date of birth, social security number, filing status from your most recent tax return, and the address used on that tax return. Now, after that, you're going to have to verify your identity using any of the financial account information that the IRS can verify via public record. This may include the last eight digits of a credit card. It can include a home mortgage loan. It can include a home equity line of credit and it include a couple other different things. But you're going to need to have financial information in order to verify the account. Now, if the IRS cannot verify your account information, then what they're gonna to have to do is they're gonna to have to mail you an identification code. And then once you receive that code, you will then come back to the site and continue the registration process. The biggest problem that I see people having is that they have a cell phone registered in their name, but the IRS can't verify it. So it's best to make sure that you have one of these account numbers handy as well so that you can ensure that you're able to set up the account all in one process. But once again, if you do not have a financial account, just know that you're going to have to manually verify it by them mailing you a code. Now, once you verify your identity, you will then be prompted to set up a username and a password. From here, you will then set up a site phrase so that you know when you're on the IRS site versus some scam or website that tells you it's the IRS and it's really not. And you will also set up a site image that does the exact same thing that lets you know that you're on the IRS site. Now, once your account is set up, you can do things like check your IRS account balance if you owe back taxes. You can make a payment if you owe on your current tax return. You can get your IRS transcripts as well as get in an identity theft pin so scammers can't file bogus tax returns under your name. But let's hope you never need to use that part of the IRS site, right? There are four different types of transcripts that taxpayers typically request from the IRS. Once you log into the account and select the Get Transcript option, you'll be presented with a screen like this. Now, while the IRS has a description listed on what each type of transcript is, we actually did a blog post on each type on our specialty site, FileToTaxReturns.com. So let's head over there because on that site, we not only put the description of the transcripts, we also have examples for you to take a look at. Now that we're here, just know that I put a link to this specific blog post in the description of this video in case you want to take a detailed look after watching. So the first thing to know is there is the tax return transcript. And this transcript shows most of the lines, including the adjusted gross income from your original tax return, along with any forms and schedules. So if we take a look at that tax return transcript, we can see right here 
that this looks like it was a married filing joint return. There's two people on it. And that it was $87,000 worth of wages. Looks like they had some income taken out. And we can see everything related to this particular tax return. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the tax account transcript. Now the tax account transcript shows basic data such as the return type, marital status, adjusted gross income, and the taxable income. So if we take a look at the account transcript, we can see here that this looks like it was two people married filing jointly. We can see their filing status was married filing joint. They had an adjusted gross income of $126,000. There were three exemptions claimed on it. So this is kind of old because there's no longer exemptions. Taxable income, 95,000. We can also see some estimated payments. So maybe these people work for themselves. And this was a 2018 tax return. So it was filed in 2018 or related to 2018. The next transcript you can get is the record of account transcript, which is a combination of both the tax return and account transcripts. And then the one that you want, the one that is the most important is the wage and income transcript. So this transcript shows data from information returns that the IRS has received, such as W-2s, 1099s, 1098s, basically everything that's needed to file a tax return. So this is what you would want. And we can take a look at an example of a wage and income transcript. This particular one is from tax year 2005. We can see that the person had a W-2 um, from an employer that was at 145 North Pole Ave. And this person had $166,000 worth of W-2 income or wages, $26,000 worth of federal taxes taken out. And we can see they also had a 1099-G. So it looks like they had a refund related to 2014. And we can also say they had dividends. So 1099 DIV showing $200 worth of dividends. So that is a wage and income transcript. This is for 2015. So it kind of gives you everything that a person would need to file on their particular tax return. The other transcript or the last one that you can get is known as a verification of non-filing letter. And this provides proof that the IRS has no record of a filed form 1040 for that particular year. So it's just a way that if you needed to prove to someone that you didn't file, you could get that verification of non-filing letter. Now, the one thing to note is that a transcript isn't a photocopy of your return. If you need the actual copy of your original return, you'll have to complete and mail form 4506, request for copy of tax return to the IRS. Now, at the time of this video, the fee is $43 for each return requested and full payment must be included with your request or it will be rejected meaning make your check or money order payable to the United States Treasury and send it with your request. If you look at the bottom of this blog post, I mentioned we have a link to the current form 4506 and you can easily get to it by just clicking on that link. And there you have it, how to create an online IRS account and instantly access all of your tax documents through the Get Transcript tool as well as the online account tool. Now. If you have a question that you would like us to answer in a future episode, then feel free to shoot us an email via the address in the description below. And did you find value in this video? Then please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. Just make sure you click on the little bell icon when you do. That way you'll get a notification whenever we upload a future video. So like I say at the end of every video, until we meet again, keep earning, keep learning, and just like that, this chat is adjourned.